Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Tokyo Disney Resort Xperi Monorail Station. That's where we are. We're going to Disney Sea today. Yeah, super excited. Um, obviously, uh, to get to Disney Sea, we actually came here from. We're staying in Tokyo. Currently, our hotel at the moment is in Shinjuku. Uh, so to get here, we actually took the Marino Uchi line, the so red line, which goes all the way to Tokyo Station, and then from Tokyo Station, we took the Keio line, JR line, which took us here to Maihama. He's coming. We'll continue. The resort. We'll now close. So yeah, we're right at the back. You can actually see out the front of this train, um, but it tends to be quite a popular space. And I quite like being at the back because is this dude the driver? Well, or does he have some like kind of control? He probably is just indicating when the train is safe, closing the doors and everything. Anyway, I love watching it because they like they wave at everybody and anyway, it's awesome. Um, yeah, if you come to my home station, you get out of the station and turn left, right? And then walk to Xperi, go straight into the resort line station. I think that's what it's called. Uh, you have to pay to use the monorail. I know it's a bit weird because you don't pay at Disney World. You pay to use the monorail here. Um, so we use our Suica, the same card that we use on the Metro. Anyway, we're going to skip over to Tokyo Disneyland Station and then we'll be on to Disney Sea after a few, a, at least one hotel station stop. Amazing. Yeah. I'm roasting. <laughs> Were you still all done up and everything? I think I need to, I've got like, I've got heat tech top on and heat tech stuff underneath my jeans. I think I overdid it. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I, we didn't show you any of the entrance into the park after getting off the monorail. The monorail to get around here took what, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Um, and when we were on the monorail, we looked on the Tokyo Disney app, which now very, very helpfully has the wait times for all the attractions on the app in English. I used to use a Japanese app to do this, and I've used a couple of, pro of um, proprietary, proprietary apps um, to do it as well. Uh, but actually using it on the Tokyo Disney website in English is fine. It's not quite as good as some of the old apps I used to have, but they were in Japanese. Um, but it, it is actually very, very usable. And there we could see that all the fast passes for soaring had gone which we expected because we weren't getting here for park opening today uh, and all the park fast passes for Toy Story were running out <laughs> so as soon as we got the monorail we purchased our tickets we did purchase them today at the park by the way and ran over ran we fastly walked or I like kind of trotted to keep up with Liam over to the Toy Story Mania section we got our fast passes for 7 30 Soaring is out, but we're not doing Fantasmic tonight and we're staying all the way to park close. So we'll try and hit up Soaring during one of those times where the queues will definitely be less than at the rest of the day. I think they're going to be well over two hours. So um, yeah, let's choose what we do now. No, that's the Duffy queue. So we, we're not going to Duffy. The first left is Duffy. The second left is Streamer Line. <laughs> Got to be very careful. Oh, you say Mars? Oh, it's a round trip. It'll take us all the way round to here. Ah. Hey, six. Hi, hey, twenty. Not that. Thirty to thirty to six five. No, this. Oh, so does car. I feel like we actually knew that. And... I feel like we've made that exact mistake before. Yeah. Like that exact one. Oh, they've got milk chocolate popcorn here. Oh, that's why at least all this queue. Or are they queuing for the Duffy bucket? No, they're... Oh, maybe, but they're all getting the milk chocolate. As well. well, you get the popcorn when you get the bucket, right? Yep. It smells good, you know, Liam. So. Let's do some learning again, because I'm pretty sure we've learned this already, but we forgot. Uh, there is a transit line steamer which goes around the park. It's a boat, uh, which is a bit of the transportation system here at Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, it's a little bit like, oh, thank you. 
It's a little bit like the train system at Disneyland and in the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World, but it stops at fewer, fewer stops. It looks like it stops at more stops, but one of the stops for a good section of the day does a round trip all the way around the park. So it's kind of like a sightseeing exploration. So I think um, if you want to do get from one side of the park to the other, you go from all the way north where Indiana Jones is to the three stop, which is yeah. the other side of the Mediterranean Harbour. And if you want to do a round trip sightseeing course, it's here by Duffy Land. <laughs> That he actually used because he didn't use Jerzo, he used something else. Campic, oh, Campicky? Oh. Per he said it's perfect. That's, yeah, definitely That's not. not. Is it good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need more to make a decision. <laughs> That's the best one. No, honey's still the best. That's good though. That's real good. So this land that we're coming into is probably one of my favourite lands at any Disney park. Oh yeah. My still my favourite is Tomorrowland at Shanghai Disneyland, but this is this is kind of kick-ass. Like theming wise. And also one of our favorite rides is here. And also it looks awesome. And also everything. Oh yeah, it's the best. 20, uh, journey to the center of the earth is over there. We're going that way for 20,000 leagues under the sea. He's so freaking adorable. We need to buy more Chandu stuff. Oh, I'm gonna get this song stuck in my head now. All day we're gonna have this song oh, stuck yeah. in our head. Uh, there has been a change of plan. We went over to, uh, not Journey to Saturday, what was that ride that we were queuing up for? 40,000. 40,000, 40, 60,000 leagues under the sea. We were queuing. <laughs> We're queuing up for 20,000 leagues under the sea, but it was actually uh, a 45 minute queue, which we thought was a bit much for that ride. Um, so we've come over to the Arabian Coast. I'm pretty sure it's called the Arabian Coast. And we're gonna do one of our favorite rides here, which is Sinbad Storybook Ride. It's uh, like a small world style ride about the Sinbad story and the tiger. Oh, it's just so cute, I wanna crush him. I'm excited about this. Hi. Arigatou gozaimasu. We got the Kinako churro. Kinako is soybean flour. They usually put it on this thing called warabi mochi, which is one of our like favorite Japanese desserts. It's like, what's warabi mochi? Like, it's made out of cognac. Mm. It's like a jelly. And they put this flour on it and you have it with sticky brown sauce. It's amazing. Anyway, um, this is the soybean flour flavor churro. So let's go. Uh, oh, you got it all over your scarf. <laughs> you like it? I really like it. We should have got two. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Oh, that's nice. I actually think this might be the one I like the most. Oh, really? The Toy Story sign. Like the actual Toy Story sign. Buzz is probably my second choice. We are about five minutes away from the distribution of our next fast pass. Uh, we've been killing time since 
going on the carousel um, by going onto Jasmine's Magic Carpet. So I say killing time, I actually do really like that ride and it had like a 10 minute queue, so it's just awesome. Yeah, really lovely view from up there, but you can't take any video, uh, but they do have a viewing platform right behind it. But as soon as the ride was over, we were like, gotta go get the fast pass. Ran over to, well, quickly walked over to Indiana Jones because that's what we want our next fast pass to be and we're early. <laughs> so we're checking out this little, I don't know, survival expedition store, which has loads of pass holders and those really, really cool Tokyo Disney light up toys. They have loads here. I actually have a good collection of these and I haven't bought one this trip. I think I might have decided which one I want, I think. Uh, they also sell some kind of warmer things if you're here during the colder months. I have no gloves today, so I may need to be needing to buy some. Um, but yeah, so if you're hanging around Indiana Jones, do check it out. I think it's on the exit. You have to come out of the ride and it will be on the exit and it has lots of cool stuff. Yeah! What time do we have it for? We have it for 17.50. And then we can pick up the next one at 1.45. That's not bad. Oh, I'm so happy we finally get to eat here. That's amazing. Oh. City of Mystery and Enchantment. Oh, nice. oh, that smells so good. <laughs> wow. Which curry is mine? Whichever one you would like. I want the one with less green beans. It's so cool in here. Sorry, my eyes are watering so much. I don't know what's happening. It's just a month of not being in my own home. We've come to the Casper food court. I'm so, so happy. And we never really get to eat here because usually there's not a vegetarian item on the menu, so I can't come with Liam. And Stephen's not massive into curry, so we tend to go and eat somewhere else. Um, but uh, they have added a vegetarian item onto the menu, which is a vegetarian curry. Now, I'm, I'm kind of happy that they've done that, um, but the one thing I will say is that it seems like the vegetarian curry has sort of gone everywhere in the Tokyo Disney Resort. So we found a couple of restaurants in uh, in Tokyo Disneyland which are now offering a vegetarian option and it was the vegetarian curry. Um, but it is amazing. This mm. one is a different curry though. Is it? It's the same curry sauce here, but the way in which they cook these vegetables is actually slightly more Indian than Japanese. Ah, uh, fair point. Yeah, and they do look good. And you get it in kind of a special bowl and stuff. And you get a naan. You also get a naan. It's very good. It's very recommended. And, the, and the, the restaurant itself looks beautiful. We're super happy we get to eat here. And you like it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. For dessert, we got... I think that they advertise as coconut custard. But I actually think it's a cream caramel. It tastes like coconut. Oh, wow. That's like cream caramel sauce but coconut. Yep. Wow. Is it cake at the bottom? Cream is good, the cake I'm not that sure about. <laughs> oh, I sort of got it this time. Ah, ski. Oh, we got the purple one. Cool. Oh, so we go to these. I'm guessing we go to these places and solve these things. Right? Yeah, I think the first thing we've got to we go into this room together, don't we? Yeah. We're going to try the Leonardo challenge, which is uh, here inside Fortress Explorations. We love Fortress Explorations. We said we've um. Hey. Right, we're out, we're out, we're out. So, we went into the little room and there was a little explanation totally in Japanese. There was no English at all. Basically, Leonardo DiCap DiCaprio. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci uh, came on the screen and uh, explained to us that I think the volcano is about to go off and um, there's a system inside of the volcano which can stop it and we have a challenge to do to do that. I'm pretty well, my Japanese got really bad recently. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, anyway, so we're following challenges around now around on our map. We have to start at point A. We have the purple map and for point A on the purple map 
have, we're going around here somewhere. And uh, yeah, we're gonna work the rest out. It's gonna be fine and fun. Is this it? Is this it? There's a little explorer sign there. Yeah. Oh wait, is this, yeah. is this it? Do I have to turn it or something? Let's see. Look at the red box. Handalu O Sankai Ten Saselu. Turn it three. Turn the handle three times. Oh, I turned it too much. Um, so yeah. Tomata Toki. So where it stops. Hako o naka no yashi yashi The mark on the the mark. It's in the middle of that box. That is the next one that we need to go to. Is the green thing the green pike pikey thing yeah so that would indicate pikey did o which is here yeah. tadashi muyo o elabu select the correct muyo whatever the muyo is oh yeah that yeah that yeah that that is a hundred percent it it's okay oh yay mm. so that's it i this is one this lamppost yeah see where oh my god it is okay what do we do here then ikimono doleka so i think it's the stuff like something to do with the the animal which is on it yep so you can see on the top oh it's a dragon yep. and we know what dragon is m dragon is m so m is here m is here ikimasho that one there isn't it Oh, is it this one? Yeah! yeah. We pull this now. Yeah? Okay, do it, yeah. We succeeded because we poured the chemical that they were making into the lava, stopping the volcanic explosion. So we did it? Yep. Wow, that was easy. And then we did all sand. Oh my god! That's awesome. That's really cool. The Leonardo challenge was really cute. It was actually quite short. Like it's not in like there's not it's not massive. You can finish it easily in 20 minutes, right? Yeah, so we went around, we did all of the places that were points that we were supposed to do, we solved all of the clues. The clues were in Japanese, but Google Translate was able to translate them. And some of them I translated correctly anyway, so it actually worked out pretty nicely. Uh, we managed to get our stamp at the end, and uh, yeah, it was, it, it, like, it was a really, really cute challenge. Uh, you could do four challenges there. Um, there is actually somebody who's done videos on YouTube of each of them. If I find them, I'll link them down below. I haven't watched them though, so I don't know how good the, 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 the videos are, um, but I did see them when I was searching online about how to play the game. Um, we're now waiting outside of Journey to the Centre of the Earth, which is here, which unfortunately went down today incredibly early in the morning. I think it was down when we entered the park. I don't think it's been up that much today at all. And um, it's only just open up and it's almost 2 p.m. So they're, at the moment, they're only letting in people who have fast passes, which we do not. The park's quite busy today. Some of the big rides have like two hour queues. So if they open up the standby line soon, we'll be one of the earlier people to ride in the standby line, which will be great. Um, but we don't actually know if they're gonna open the standby line soon. So this is kind of a gamble. We're sort of taking it and seeing what happens. This has paid off for me in the past and it has not paid off for me in the past. Um, but yeah, we know that the ride is running. That's like the most important thing. We know the ride is running. People are getting on it. It's just when they're gonna let standby queue in. That's, that's the thing. 
私の人生をかけた研究の成果を見たり Oh, this is great Because I thought usually this would all be full We did it <laughs> So it was actually really touch and go um, Our fast pass window opened Liam went down to go and get fast passes from 20,000 leagues under the sea Just as they opened the standby line for this ride A journey to the center of the earth It actually wasn't at the entrance that they opened the standby line They walked us up to a bit like sort of further off If you're looking to the entrance they walked us up to the left and then led us into the standby line. I ain't gonna lie, it was a bit like a crush on the train at rush hour. Um, but once we were through the initial bit, it's actually been fine. And it looks like we're gonna get onto the rides within 10 minutes. Now, in, like in fairness, we just waited 25, 30 minutes outside. But, it was a little, it, was, it wasn't too bad. These brains taking a picture of Atlantica. It's pretty hard to get a picture from Atlantica because usually you come in from over there, which is where you go to the mysterious island, all the Jules Verne stuff, 20,000 leagues on the sea and um, journey to the center of the earth, and go over this bridge. And it has a really hard, like you're, it's really difficult to get a good shot of the whole thing. But from this spot here, this little out covey thing here, you can get a really good picture of it. You come out of the mysterious island area, don't hang a left to go, or don't go straight to the Atlantica, turn right and go round and then go to that bit and then you get a good picture. It's not that bad a shot from here. It's just not as good as over there. To be honest, this bridge is quite busy sometimes though and then it's not a good shot. That is very true. Around uh, Atlantica, there are a million hidden Mickeys. I keep finding one and going, oh look, it's here. And then finding another one right next to it. There's all this mosaic stuff. There's like sort of hidden Mickeys everywhere. I think the most obvious one is this one here. There. But there are lots. I just saw another one right over there. <laughs> Liam, this is King Triton yep. and his pony dolphins. Um, ha look underneath here. Yeah. Oh no, this way, this way, this way, a little bit more. Yeah, do you know where that is? No. Look, Prince Eric, it's Prince Eric. That's where we're gonna go right now. Maybe this is why Liam always calls it Triton's Lagoon. It's because it says Triton's Kingdom here. Oh. Right, the deal with Mermaid Lagoon is it is made for kids. You will see as we pan over, all the rides are for babies. So uh, like there's like some puffer fish thing going on there. Like a little, what are they called? Tea cuppy ride, but for kids. And over there, my favorite, the jumping jellyfish. I call it my level of Tower of Terror because they go up and they go down at a pace that I can keep up with, unlike Tower of Terror, which is terrifying. The one really important thing here if you're an adult is the bit which is in there. 
which is Ariel's playground. Uh, that's where the Eric statue is, and that's where we're going to be going. It's amazing, right? I had no idea I was here. Him. She didn't because she somehow managed to get a statue. No, she fancies him because like, I don't know. So she swims to the surface and she sees like, she knows she's obsessed with the surface, right? Yeah. She, she swims to the surface, she finds like this ship and he's on it and she kind of looks at him and he's, she's a bit like, he's dreamy, you know? I don't think there's a personality element into like Ariel liking Eric, really. It's kind of a shame actually. That is amazing. There's a tiny little bell. You're cheating, Liam. How? Because you, you know where it is. Because you. I was, I was actually grabbing the mirror, but the gem is down through a glass panel under here, so you can't actually get to it. You know how reflections work. I think we've worked out how this works. <laughs> There's something in there. I know, there is. What? Should I know if I know the little man? Stephen and I actually spent a really long time trying to activate this mirror because Obviously, there's something weird about it. Like, uh, obviously. On the other side. So, like, we were trying to push everything and we couldn't figure it out. We actually stood here on our phones, like, looking on the internet, trying to work out. In the movie, Ariel has a mirror exactly like this and nothing happens to it. Another character uses it. I'm not doing anything, it just. Yeah, there he is. Yes, we're going to see Ursula because she has great and magical powers. <laughs> so this is the mirror. In the movie, Ursula is always using it to look, well not always, but she uses it a few times to look at Ariel. And so this is the deal. Look at this. This is amazing. Oh, they look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula's Japanese voice is amazing. Her English voice is unbelievable. Her Japanese voice is really cool though too. This is where Flotsam and Jetsam are actually though. And you can't grab them either. Oh, it's a butt! Look there! Of course, because that's the surface. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. It is cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good thing I wore trainers today. Wow. Whoa, you can see an anchor. And Lee, you can tell you're underneath the sea because of all the bubbles that are going up. Definitely. <laughs> It's time for the best dessert here at Disney Sea. The sea, sea salt ice cream Monica. That's it, sea salt ice cream Monica. This is my favorite, favorite ice cream here. Actually, it's my favorite snack. I know lots of people like the alien mochi. I've said it a few times, I think this is better. Um, it's sea salt vanilla ice cream inside of a wafer. That's what a, what a Monica is. It's stuff inside of a wafer. It does. Thank you very much. Hi! Oh, it's so lovely to meet you. Very lovely. I'm lovely to meet you. Oh, of course, Max. You're so cute. Do you like 
How did you eat lots of food today? Oh goodness. Yeah. So many bones. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what oh. he likes to do? What did you like to Every do? Every time we go playing on the beach, he'll pretend to be asleep. <laughs> oh. Just so I have to carry him home. You, have, you can't carry. I mean, no, you're. you're, you're One perfect. day I'll be as big as Triton. Ah. Oh, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, my favorite thing about today is that Tropical Owls sells pizza flavored torta and hot chocolate. It's drinker, isn't it? Hot chocolate or drinker. To drinker, drinker. yeah. Drinker. It's very hard to drink vegan. Hi. He's back, our oh, dude. <laughs> Getting kind of addicted to these pizza torta things. We also got the hot chocolate with marshmallows, which as Liam described, is a hot chocolate with marshmallows. It's supposed to be a special thing, that's the problem. Yeah, so they do sell cocoa or hot chocolate in, in, in Tokyo Disney Park during the winter, not during the summer. Because uh, that would be strange. Um, but uh, it, this one is a special one for the season and it comes with marshmallows. It is good, you're right. But the ruby chocolate with raspberry is better. Oh, yeah, that's special. It's and they are selling that here in Disney Sea. We're going to take this transit steamer line. Attempt number two for today. Uh, this transit steamer line from this stop here, which I'll point out to you on a map, is we'll take a half loop around a half loop. It is a half loop. Yeah. A half loop around um, the waterways here at Disney Sea. And so it's going to drop us off at Mediterranean Harbour. We actually have a choice. Uh, there'll be a boat here that will go to Med Mediterranean Harbour or a boat from here which will go to the American Waterfront. We decided to let fate decide which way we go. <laughs> so we're taking the boat to Mediterranean Harbour. We'll go have a look at some of the shops there. Uh, it's a really lovely thing to do, especially at this time of day. Yeah, your boat is named after a video game's character. <laughs> it's from Uncharted and his like, name is Nathan Drake, isn't it? I suppose he's, he's yeah. Francis Drake's great, 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 great. <laughs> They're very cute. Look at Jasmine's flying carpet. It's amazing. This boat is so freaking cool. We're now leaving the Arabian area and the Little Mermaid area and going through this tunnel into the mysterious island. Cute atmospheric music. Look at this. Yes. Oh, look at all the people. There's so many people waving. Yay! Dude, Mediterranean Harbour looks. <laughs> Liam's not impressed. Whoa, it's a good view from here. It is. That's better. I stuck it on a different colour. So you can sort of see, oh, I think I'm getting in this poor girl's picture, so I'll move over a little bit. That is Fortress Explorations. That's where she's having her picture. The volcano, Fortress Explorations. They're doing a little bit of work over there. I've seen them do work over that area for ages, actually. The bridge is over that side. Uh, then Tower of Terror. This is the full Mediterranean Harbour. Hotel Miracosta is the big buildings at the back. And then you're going into the other side. And this is where we just got off the boat. Amazing. That was actually a really good spot. This one down here. There, what, that, there, there, there. Uh, to get some good views of this whole area. Um, and I think the only way that you can get down there is if you take the boat to this stop and get off. Because you can't get over there. Boat going again. You can't get over there otherwise. So that's pretty cool. Couldn't they just have like put I don't know even a market here? Was, oh, he's not here. To, that's Liam, and I was just talking at him, and he's gone over there. Okay. 
We're just saying this whole bit back here is really quite interesting. Soaring is up that way, by the way. And if I spin all the way around 180 degrees, Mediterranean Harbour is over there. Um, it's just really weird how this corridor has always existed and they've never put anything up here. Um, it could be that a lot of those buildings are Mira Costa buildings, so they can't use them for something else, like yeah. their rooms or stuff to do with the hotel. But do you know what would work down there so well? Market stores. Like, market stores are selling anything. Sell anything. Port Discovery. Discovery. I like Port Discovery area. There's two rides here at the moment, Agritoga, which is down, and Nemo and Friends Sea Rider, which is a simulator, which does make one feel a bit ill. Um, so we won't be doing it. I have done it. It's very cute. Beautiful entry-level simulator for your young ones. Where are we going? Over there to the statue. Ooh! That is a cute statue. And the Nemo ride is all at the Marine Life Institute, which is looking pretty swish right now. And you see this awesome model of the, uh, like all the fish. What are those fish that swim all together called? School cool. of fish or a shoal of fish? It's a school of fish, but those fish have a particular name. These ones in Nemo that all oh, swim together, uh, like in the big uh, group. Mackerel tuna, I don't know, that's something. Anyway, they're over there and they're cool. I love this section at night, it's amazing. Really, really, oh, and this looks unbelievable. Wow. That is so cool. Oh, I've got to take a picture. 110 or 120, I didn't quite see. Uh, 110 or 120 minutes standby, but we have a fast pass. Fast pass, oh yeah. Welcome to Indiana Jones, we're just about to get on the ride. Um, this is an awesome ride and it's really popular today. The queue is crazy. Uh, this is pretty much the same ride as the Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland. Uh, it's like a, a bit like Dinosaur in Disney World and it's amazing. I ain't gonna be able to get a lot of it on camera, it's super dark in there. Uh, you'll probably just hear me screaming a lot. Yay! You're not supposed to look at it, but like it's a bit too late because I looked at it. It's amazing. Take us. Well, I thought some good pictures. Last time we were here and the park was closing down. And it was just empty and still beautiful. It's really cool. Uh, the Toy Story standby line is currently at 70 minutes. It's not too bad, actually. Um, but we have a fast pass. 
I love this Toy Story room. The Florida one's cute as well. I like the height here. You get a lot of height in this room. Which ones are we taking? Whichever ones you want. I think they're all the same. You think so? I want these two then. There we go. Right, it's Toy Story Mania time. I love this queue. This is amazing. We're just about to board the ride. This is Andy's room, Andy's bed, Andy's. Is this Meccano or Connects or. Neither those. I can't remember what it's called. Andy's connector stuff. Plug points, end of the plug, all the lights. Mickey, watch on the wall. It's awesome. Who's going to win? <laughs> Congratulations, Liam. I'm not bitter at all. Oh, there they go. Oh, yeah. a mickey but you know wow liam i never noticed that before for watching the Tokyo Disney Sea vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Liam and I had an amazing day. I obviously didn't close the vlog properly and that's why I'm here in my London apartment, but I did want to do uh, just a little bit. I wanted to add just a little bit onto the end. Um, first of all, the day that we went to Tokyo Disney Sea was actually quite busy. I think this was because uh, during January, we actually found that the park was closing quite early on a number of evenings, sort of around 6 or 7 p.m. So we chose to go on a day where the park was closing very, very late. And I think a lot of other people had the same idea so the park actually ended up being quite busy uh, the other thing was that you probably noticed is we did not end up riding soaring which was kind of disappointing in a way first of all we didn't get to the park early enough to either run straight onto soaring or to get a soaring fast pass you would have noticed that we um, weren't using the app to get tokyo disney fast passes if you want to know more about why uh, please see the tokyo disneyland video i go into it a little bit more but it was basically because of the restrictions with um, the ios app store uh, so we were picking up paper fast passes but even regardless of that we still didn't enter into the park early enough to get a soaring fast pass. My recommendation is if you're going to go to Tokyo Disney Sea and you want to try and ride soaring, get there sig with significant time before the park opens, probably around 40 minutes before the park opens at least. Also, if you're not using the app to get fast passes, I would say walk at speed <laughs> to uh, soaring and try and get on it as soon as you possibly can in the morning. For us, it wasn't too much of a letdown because we've ridden soaring in a few other parks or I've ridden soaring in a few other parks and the ride itself is actually incredibly similar what is very unique about the Tokyo Disneyland soaring though is the queue the queue is supposed to be absolutely amazing so when I return to Disney Sea in uh, in May of this year I will be trying to get on it and see some of the queue I actually don't care about the ride so much I just want to see the queue it's really really bizarre um, but yeah anyway the rest of the day was absolutely perfect and we were fine with our decision around soaring I think at the end of the day we left about 20 
20 minutes before the park closed because we'd done all the things which we wanted to do and um and yeah had an amazing time highlights i think for me this time were the leonardo challenge which is something that we never did before and also journey to the center of the earth which is one of my favorite rides in any park absolutely love it um all, also casper food court casper food court was really cool i'm um, glad we got an opportunity to to eat there if you have any questions about tokyo disney sea or disneyland drop them in the comments below the parks are sadly closed at the moment due to the coronavirus but at present they're still supposed to be opening on march 16th if that changes i'll put anything in the description below but yeah thank you so much for watching um the next set of videos will be about traveling around japan in general so i think we're gonna start off with some kyoto stuff uh from next week so we'll do some kyoto vlogs and then moving around to other parts of japan so thanks again so much for watching and i hope to see you all again soon thanks again everyone bye